on, come on, Instagram. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to come on in. I wish I could sit down, but I'll give everybody a few minutes to come on in. We are right at six o'clock, and I'll give everybody a few minutes to get in. Um, because we are on YouTube as well as Instagram. So you guys come on in uh, on this nice Friday, on this beautiful Friday, okay? So we'll give everybody a, a couple of, a few more seconds on um, YouTube to come on in and a few more seconds on Instagram to come on in as well. I have a story to tell y'all before we get started and I'm not going to be very long when I tell y'all. I'll tell you why I am on this <laughs> side right here. Yes, it is. Um, it is a nice Friday in Georgia today. Yesterday was really cool. Like that was a shocker for me. I was like, oh my gosh. Who? Oh, wow. It was, I think it was it was pretty cool. It was cool to where I had to have a jacket on. But today, nice, overcast, not too hot. So I have no complaints here because I know we are going to have our fair share in the next few months of hot weather. So hello, hello, Jewel. Hello, everybody on uh, YouTube land. We are going to get started. And first of all, let me tell y'all this. Um, hi, Maureen. How are you? Let me tell y'all this really quick. If you're not subscribed to us on YouTube, I'm not going to talk it up right now, y'all. Make sure you're subscribed. We had a video that was set for yesterday, okay? Then we have a video that's in line for Sunday, but I'm about to move that over. Y'all, it has been a week for me, and I got it on film. And I'm going to put it out Sunday. I'm going to move the other film that I was going to put out. Like it's ready, queued up. I said, uh-uh, no, we got to move this one. We got to move this one back. We we have got to put this one out Sunday because it has been a very interesting and trying week. What I will tell y'all is my patio right now is a mess. But again, I'm going to put it out Sunday. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you turn the notification on because normally I put our uh, YouTube uploads out about six um, in the evening. But this one right here, I'm going to spend tomorrow editing and we are going to put this one out probably Sunday morning. Make sure you have your notifications turned on because, honey, I tell y'all, we're going to breathe Y'all are what really makes me, you know, love coming out here to do these lives on every Monday and Friday. Like I've been looking forward to do to right now doing this live. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We have um, everybody on Instagram and YouTube. Welcome. Happy Friday, y'all. Happy Friday. Um, for those of you who are just joining, my name is Ayana of Southern Entertaining and what we try to do is we want to, everyone, stop imagining about a garden that you wish you had. Let's go ahead and grow one and let's grow it together, okay? We just want to grow. And like I said before, growing is a very good skill to have. You don't have to start a farm. You don't have to, you know, do all that. But just knowing how to grow that's that's a that's a beautiful skill. It's a beautiful skill. So if you if you are new, make sure you like and share. If you know someone that is interested in growing, talked about growing, went and got a plant, make sure you share this information with them. And as always, we go live on Instagram and YouTube every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And then every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, if you happen to forget, make sure you text the word Let's Grow, L E T S G R O W, to 474747. Text the word Let's Grow to 474747, and you'll be notified every time we go live. And then also when we have different specials on the websites, when we have different freebies, different giveaways, you will be notified by text. If you're just getting started 
and you kind of want to, I call this the boot camp or the basic training, the basic training of gardening, make sure you download our free ebook, Five Tips to a Flourishing Garden. Um, when the video gets done rendering on YouTube, I will make sure that I put the link in there. And then also on Instagram, the link is in my bio, uh, Five Tips to a Flourishing Garden. We're calling that our basic training, um, just to go ahead and jumpstart and get you going with gardening okay we still have a few seeds left um i think the i really think the butterfly peas are depleted um i tried to check my phone before i came and i think the notification did say the butterfly peas are depleted but we still have roselle we have basil pumpkin arugula and spinach i want to say but make sure you vi uh, visit www.southernentertaining.com um, and then just click on shop and seeds and it'll show you everything that we have in stock. So let's go ahead. I think we, I think that's all the housekeeping that we have. Let's go ahead and let's start this off. Okay. So a lot of y'all know how I really love growing vegetables and flowers and herbs like all together. My reasoning or all in the same area. And my main reason for that is, especially with my fruiting plants, like my tomatoes, my bell peppers, my cucumbers, like I like to grow uh, flowers that's going to bring in pollinators because we've been having a lot of bees um, coming around. So when they, when it's in close proximity, I feel like the bees don't have very far to go in order to pollinate like, you know, my cucumbers or my squash or things like that. So I like to just plant everything just kind of in the same area so that the pollinators don't have a long way to go. It is so pretty, y'all. I did not have my phone today, but we have black and blue salvia and the hummingbirds. I just feel so, I feel like I'm doing my part. You know, like when I see hummingbirds and bees going around to the different um, plants and flowers, I just feel like I am, I'm, I'm doing my part, you know? So, the hummingbirds were so pretty. So I got to make sure I keep my phone in my back pocket all the time. But I'm saying that to lead into, even though we go grow flowers for beauty, we can also grow flowers and eat them as well. Let me put out a disclaimer really quick because I want to make sure that I put this out. With the flowers that we're about to discuss, I prefer, I really strongly encourage you to start them from seed because that way you'll know what you did with it, how it was started, what was put on there. If you're not sure how to start seeds, when to start seeds for your zone, um, for your zip code, click on the link for Instagram and get the seed starting masterclass. And in YouTube, I'll put the link in the bio. So that way you'll know when it's time to start based on reading the package and based on your zone. It's not what anybody else is putting out on social media. You're starting it at the right time. I just told somebody the other day, I have to pull my cilantro. Cilantro is a cool weather plant for us. It grows um, in the spring, it grows in the fall. Now I'm leaving it because it produces the white flowers and the bees are loving it right now but that's because I didn't have anything ready to go in that space. Now I have something ready, but if you want to, if you want to leave cilantro, that's okay because after the flowers, they're going to produce like the coriander seeds and you can um, use that and put that in your spice uh, jar. But I said that to say with these flowers right here, all except for one, and I'll tell you about that, I prefer that we grow them from seeds because if you don't grow them from seeds like at the garden centers you don't know if they've sprayed them um and the same uh you don't know if they've sprayed them you don't know what they've put on them and then like we ingest them so i highly encourage you and these are the, what i'm about to discuss is really easy to start from seed so let's go ahead and let's start with number one and this is, this is really why I want to segue into this. Like, even if you put chemicals on your grass, like, don't do this. Don't, don't eat it. Like, grow it where you know what you're putting on it. Because we're putting this in our, in our body. 
So the first flower, we can grow so many people. Look at this as weeds. But when I tell you this is like a powerhouse plant, dandelions. Now, I got plenty of dandelions in my in my uh, yard, and I don't, I don't even use the weed and feed anymore. I just let the rain from the sky water it. Sometimes I'll put on the sprinkler, but the dandelions, and also make sure if you're doing dandelions in your uh, yard, make sure you identify and know that it's really dandelions because dandelions are so good um, medicinally, uh, first of all, and then also people, I don't know if y'all have went to the stores yet, but like um, our natural food store here, they're sell selling dandelion leaves, okay, for like $7. And I'm thinking, honey, I got, I got plenty of those in my yard. <laughs> so $7 for some dandelion leaves. You can eat them raw in a salad. You can also um, steam them. And you can also put the flowers on top of your salad. But I thought that was a good one to eat because we ha we here have an abundance of dandelion just growing right here. And you can just pick those again, make sure no chemicals were put on those and you can add them into a salad. You can saute the greens up and you can use the dandelions and you can also drink dandelion tea. Very good. Very good. It helps aid in uh, cleansing like the kidneys and the liver. So it's like a powerhouse and it's a flower and it's pretty and the bright yellow flower is amazing. And you can, and they still sell the seeds. Like if you don't have them in your area, then you can get you um, just a pot and grow dandelion and harvest those and eat them. Or you can grow them in a raised bed. Totally up to you. The second flower that not only you can grow, you can eat as well. So y'all comment and let me know, do you grow chives? Once chives have uh, grown, you see that they make those yellow, uh, the purple flowers. They make little purple flowers and those flowers are actually edible. A lot of people that I know make a chive vinegar with the, uh, with the flower part of the chives. Um, they take the flowers and sometimes pull them apart and they will also sprinkle on their salad as well. So chives is a good plant to grow that produces a beautiful flower and a lot, a lot. They even sell, I think at some stores, they sell chive vinegar, but you can make your own. Um, if you don't follow Finch and Folly on Instagram, she gives a recipe on how to, to make like the, uh, the chive blossom vinegar, because you can use that for salads as well. I know I use a lot of vinegar. <laughs> I use a lot of vinegar for a lot of things, but I thought that that was something good to make and it's pretty and it adds flavor to your vinegar. So let me look at the comments because I've seen a couple of people said that they, um, uh, Juliana, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, uh, dandelion jelly. That is a good one as well. Dandelion jelly is good. And then we do have some people that grow chives as well. Number three, y'all know this is like, I don't know, this is like one of my favorite flowers to grow as well. Um, the calendula. Hello, King Tax Services. How are you? Thank you for joining us here on Instagram. I like the calendula. Now, me personally, I know that the butterflies, they love it. They absolutely love it. And the bees love it. They'll like make a pillow and just come sit on it. But they're so pretty. They're so colorful. And then what I um, do is do the uh, calendula salve where you let it steep in oil and you let it extract all of the medicinal qualities and then you make a salve with it. But you can also take those uh, calendula flowers and you can pick them apart. Y'all know where I'm going with it again, the salad, okay? Y'all know salad is like, lettuce is one of my favorite things to grow, which is, that's my first ebook and we still have it on our website is Let Us Grow Together because if you are new, that's like, Lettuce is not only satisfying, but it opens up a whole new world to people because, you know, we're so used to the lettuce at the store. And when you start growing the different kinds, the different colors, the different tastes, 
I'm telling you, you do not want to go back. You don't want to go back. Y'all know how I love lettuce. Right here in front of me, y'all, okay? Look, I'm telling you, lettuce, I don't know. And I'm going to be sad because lettuce is also one that once it gets really hot here, it'll start bolting. So I'm going to be sad that when I can't grow lettuce during those hot months but any other time you better believe i'm growing some type of lettuce but you can put the calendula uh little flowers you can pick them apart you can put them on uh your salad i've also seen people take uh calendula and pick them apart and just kind of decorate like the little tea cakes or just like little cakes like add the floral decoration to it as well so calendula is a great flower that is not only beneficial to the insects, but if you grow it alongside your flowers and herbs and vegetables, or you can grow it alone, but that's a flower that you, you also can eat as well. So that was number three. Now this is the one I wanted to talk to y'all about because I didn't start it from seed, but make sure that if you get this, you source it from someone who is growing it organically. And that's rose. You see cakes decorated with roses, but we actually take our rose petals um, and we dry them. You can make like a rose oil with it. You can, I actually take the dry uh, rose leaves and I put them in, um, I dry them in the dehydrator and I actually put them in my tea. Hello, Angela, how are you? I put them in my tea, but Y'all know, I think a few weeks ago, honey, I ran me some bath water and put the rose in there. So, but you can also eat rose as well. Now, one of the common ones that we're growing that we're actually growing for the rose hips is, is called Rosa Rugosa, R-U-G, wait a minute now, R-U-G-O-S-A. So Rosa Rugosa, the flower is total, totally edible because you see people decorate with roses on, um, cakes but you can also those the rosa ragosa produces a beautiful rose hip uh, now a lot of people use um the rose hips to make like different jams and jellies with it but y'all know what i'm what i'm doing with the rose hip we're using it in some tea we're using rose hips and <laughs> we're using rose hips uh in the tea so rose is also an edible flower that you can um eat as well we steep it in the tea right now the rose um leaves the rose petals steep it in the leaves and it gives it it's a very uh you could i could tell when rose is in my tea it's not a bad flavor but it's like a little sweetness and then it's very uh dependent on what kind it's like a, fl a really floral smell smells really good but we have like some cream a rose petals and then also the burgundy and the pink but the rosa ragosa if, and, and, you, and all roses, it doesn't have to be that particular um, type of rose. It's just that one is known for the rose hips. They produce some beautiful, nice, big rose hips in the fall that you can harvest and you can use the rose hips. But um, any, any rose is edible because um, they use rose a lot to decorate with. Most people don't eat it. I know they use for decorations, but it's, it's a, so much you can do with it besides um, eat the rose as well. well. Make you some rose oil with it. Make you a rose, uh, like a facial steam with the rose. It's just so much you can do. Rose hip tea is delicious. Yes, and that's why we do the particular Rosa Ragosa for those rose hips. So let's talk about number five. And I know we had some people that are joining us um and we'll just go back over everything but number five not only is this a good companion plant it produces beautiful flowers and the leaves and the flower is edible and that's nasturtium so y'all comment if you grow nasturtium because the leaves to me has a peppery like a little peppery bite to it that you can definitely add in your salads <laughs> you can add it in your salads um the leaves but the flowers are so pretty um i went to like a farmer's market one time and they had like a lettuce blend but they had uh the nasturtium flower in there and like a few of the nasturtium leaves in there i'm telling you it just 
it's so much to just like a basic salad. You you could do so much with it, but the rose, um, the nasturtium is really, it gives it a really taste. Like if you like some of those lettuces with a, a little bite to it, I know arugula is like one of my favorite because it has like a little bit of peppery bite. It's, it's a distinct taste to me, but you can, uh, nasturtium is just like the arugula like it just has a peppery bite but you can also put the flowers in there and eat it and again y'all all of these you can start from seed okay now the rosa rugosa i've never started rose from seed never have i ever but i did source it from a place that you know they were certified organic and we got the it was kind of kind of like a bare root here but it has really grown to be very beautiful and we got three of those so but the other ones you can definitely 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 start these from seeds okay they're very easy and it does not take them long to germinate and you will just love adding these to your food as well all of these flowers are edible so if you're just joining us really quickly let's go over five flowers that you can grow but not only can you grow it they are edible and you can use these in your meals and you can make uh vinegars out of it teas so the first one we talked about was the dandelion and remember i have plenty of dandelion right here in my yard and we don't use um we don't use chemicals like on the grass especially in the back make sure you know what you're picking if you're going to um what they call forage it forage forge it make sure you know what you're picking um before and identify that it is dandelion but um dandelion the leaves i'm telling y'all at the natural health food store they're selling like a little i'm talking about a little small bundle okay of the dandelion leaves for seven dollars and i'm like honey all of this is growing right back here and I know we're going to have some more because you know how they go and they make those little thin, uh, <laughs> the little white part. You, I remember taking the flower and blowing it, you know, but I'm telling you, um, it's expensive and we have it right here. But if you don't, if you don't have it in your area, always, 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 you can just grow it yourself. So um, the dandelions was number one, chives. We all love, I don't know about y'all, but I like to use chives. Honey, I will cut me up some and I will put them on a baked potato, but you let them um, flower and they produce the most pretty purple flowers. So you can take those flowers and you can like take them apart and put them on your salad or you can make what's called a chive vinegar. And it's also other uses for that as well. But uh, I know Finch and Folly on Instagram specifically has like a recipe for the chive vinegar, which you can make like a, a dressing or marinate with. So chives is another one. Um, the rose, the rose, any rose is edible, but the Rosa Ragosa, if you want them specifically for like some beautiful rose hips during the fall, Rosa Ragosa, but we still have other um, roses that we have here. We don't put any chemicals, y'all. It smells so good. We pick the roses off. We'll dehydrate them, but you can use them if you want to decorate a flower or decorate, I mean, sorry, decorate a cake, put them on some tea cakes, you know, but they're also edible. You can definitely um, eat them. Do your facial steam. Steep them in some hot water and take you a rose water. <laughs> take your rose bath. It's so many things you could do with roses, okay? Number four was calendula. Calendula is, um, it's really pretty. And I'm not, y'all know my favorite flower colors are pink and purple and white, but I just, it just feels like summer and sunshine when I see the calendula flowers. Like most of the ones we grow are like the orange and the yellow. And we did grow like a strawberry blonde one. That was so pretty too, but you can make calendula oil with that, but you can also take those flowers apart and you can put them on your salad. And the last one, I love this one because we're definitely going to be using these in the garden for not only companion planting, but eating too. And that is the nasturtium. They're so pretty. You can eat both the flowers, both the leaves. They have like a little peppery bite to it but they have so many different colors of the uh, the nasturtium flower. It's just, 
it's really pretty when it starts to grow. Um, grow, grow with TLC. Yes, calendula flower is very pretty. It's so pretty. It just reminds me of just like summer, you know, <laughs> just like summertime. And I just love seeing the bees just kind of take a nap. You know, when it's hot here in Georgia, honey, they take them a nap right on those um, uh, calendula flowers as well. But nasturtium is a really pretty one um, to grow in your garden if you have not. So I'm going to go through the comments on here. Hello, every single body that has joined us. I appreciate y'all taking off your out your time. If you're just joining us, remember, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, okay, go ahead and subscribe. Put on your notifications because I'm going to put up a video, y'all. Uh, it, it was a it was a trying week this week. And that's why I'm on this side of the patio today. And I'm going to get myself together because we're going to have to start sitting down doing these garden chats. And I almost was together, but we had uh, we had something that happened. And that's why I was like, you know what? I can't talk about it yet, y'all. I just want to show you. I, I don't even want to talk about it right now. <laughs> I, let me tell you, I had to call. I had to call an emergency meeting on this one, okay? I was like, oh, no, 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 no. We can't have this. But so make sure we had another video that was supposed to go up Sunday. We going to move that one back. We moving that one back and I'm going to try my best to get this one up uh, Sunday morning. I normally try to get them up at Sunday uh, around six o'clock, you know, when everybody's settling down. No, I need y'all to see this one so y'all can tell me what you think because I'm just like, mm -mm, no, there, it's not going to happen today. Not today not today so hello and i do appreciate everyone for taking out their time hi betty from texas hi devin from white bear lake minnesota zone 4b how is the weather up there i was just saying that was it yesterday it feels good out here now but it was like i think it was the low 50s and then it was like 61 because all i could think about Y'all, I'm bad. Is I'm like, ooh, now we can't let the weather drop too low because, honey, my, my tomatoes, is they doing real good. I think we're going to have some tomatoes in the next few weeks. Um, cucumbers are coming up good. Um, so we talked about the dandelion jelly. Um, hello, Yaya's Garden. I'm so glad that Angela could join us live. Gardening with Bernie. Hello, Rosehip Tea. Yes, it is. Uh, King Tax Service is Southern Entertaining as well. Yeah, we're going to have that video coming out. It's, I was distraught, y'all. I don't want to keep it. I don't want to like, because uh, I don't like for people to just keep talking about stuff and not <laughs> and not tell me what it is. But it, it was it was a catastrophe back here on my, on my uh, patio. And it's still a catastrophe. That's why I'm facing this way today. Last minute tax returns. Yes, I think, is it the 17th? Is the last day King Tax Service 18? Uh, 18, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that the 17th is the last day. If y'all have not done your taxes, you better contact King Tax Services 18. I'm telling you, do your taxes. <laughs> oh, I just had, uh, yes, okay, so uh, the 17th is the last day. I just had a conversation with my cousin uh, today. We were talking on the phone. And for all of y'all know that I'm an accountant, but I don't do taxes. I do like the government accounting. And I was just say, girl, you better get them taxes done. You don't play with the IRS like that. You know, play play with somebody else, but don't play with them. <laughs> Cause they might not come get you this year. Maybe not next year, but they gonna come they coming for you. So don't don't uh no, don't play with them. Mm -mm. Um let's see here. Okay, so I love to grow lettuce too. Yes, lettuce is is like now let me tell you something about lettuce i absolutely love growing lettuce yes i do but this is how i know that it's coming to an end um i'm starting to get aphids on my lettuce. when it starts to warm up and get hot i notice on my lettuce i start to get aphids so i know that it's coming to a point that it's probably going to go to seed and do all of that yeah that's right king tax services that's the truth <laughs> that i i keep telling people they don't want to believe me i'm like look uh, you, when you forget about stuff, they come, they come in for it. Stuff you didn't forgot about. They come in for you. Okay. If, if you didn't did something, you didn't have no business doing. <laughs> they come in for you. Um, so just go ahead and, and be truthful. 
Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see here. Yes, so lettuce is good. And I'm so glad we call Angela. Okay, so gardening with Bernie is growing nasturtium and calendula, both from seed. Yes, y'all know I advocate. And not only um, when you grow from seed do you know what you're doing, but you also can pick, you know, I know a big um, nasturtium, you, you just can have more variety. So it's, it's I think it's called Empress of India nasturtium. It's a pretty red flower, but now they're making so many types of nasturtium. Like, I'm not going to go to my garden center and find Aloha nasturtium. It's, it's a really pretty, um, like they have yellow, orange, kind of pinkish flowers. Think of Hawaii. So I know that I'm not going to find Aloha nasturtium at my garden center, but I can definitely grow it and still have like, I can have the pick as long as it can grow in my zone of, you know, what I want to grow here versus um, what's at the garden center. That's why I love seeds. I love seeds because I know what I've done to them, but I also love them for um, the versatility of being able to grow things that I do not see in my area. So um, I know we always have the same, and y'all know it too, like at the garden centers, they sell what sells in your area, what's most popular. But you, I like to be a little bit outside of the box sometimes, you know, and just grow some stuff that you hadn't seen. You know, um, who's going to have some, is that blue? I think it's blue delphinium or something like that. Um, but it's just, it's just different stuff I just don't see. And it's so pretty. I'm looking at, uh, I got to update y'all on... A garden tour as well I owe y'all that everything is like I feel like I'm behind now but I'm gonna get back you're never behind um, unless you don't just don't do it unless you don't do it you're never behind um, yes grow with TLC you just you have so many choices of variety that you can use so that's why I don't mind starting seeds I don't mind them I don't mind them starting them early so if you're confused make sure you get the seed starting um, master class. So a lot of people have really DM me and emailed me and said, it's just all clear now. <laughs> it's all like, I understand it's clear. And a lot of times we can make things difficult, but once you learn the main important stuff, honey, y'all, y'all ain't, y'all gonna keep one grow seeds. You probably not even gonna want to go. You'd like, you know what? I'm about to grow me some, um, what do I have in there? That's like different. I don't know. It's, I have some pretty flowers that we are growing um, this year that you, you're not going to see at the garden center. Um, is Rugosa very thorny? They do have thorns. They do. I'm not going to lie to you. I always, every time I deal with my roses, I always have like the leather, leather gloves on. Um, but they are, they are, they, yeah, they are a little bit thorny they, they are but the thorns are not as like y'all know we have some david austin roses and those you have got to watch yourself because those got some thorns on them but i do love the david austin roses because the stem is nice and thick and it holds up but the thorns you gotta work to for me um you gotta work with like those leather gloves and i also like a long sleeve shirt too because sometimes i'm getting down in the flower and I don't want to, I don't want to scratch myself because I keep burning, I don't know, sometimes I burn myself and uh, I'm talking about on the inside, y'all, with the stove. I'm like, how did I do, what is, what is wrong with me today? And then I don't feel it or I don't notice it and then I'll have be a little bit sore and I'm like, did you, did you burn yourself? Yes. I got to get myself in order, y'all. I really do. Um... Let's see. I'm just going through some of the comments. So if y'all have any questions, put them in. And then we're just going to recap because I did see a few more people join us on Instagram here. Um, let's see. 17th, the last day. Yes, 17th is the last day. Get your taxes done. I always wait to the end, but I didn't do it this year. I'm so glad they extended because I do wait to the, to the end. Okay, so Devin 60s today and 80s next week. Well, okay, so that's not that's not bad at all. That's good weather. Like you said, it's time to get planting. Yes, I know you are excited in zone 8B. Um, I love to start growing roses. Uh, I love to start growing roses. Is there a certain kind that's good for containers? A lot of the David Austin rose, we have one in the front. Now, okay, let me think about which one. What's the name of it? 
But I will tell you, you can go on David Austin and y'all know how, wait a minute, let's back up. Y'all know how I am. If I recommend anything, I really stand by it. And some, and, I, and the reason why I'm saying that, because I'm going to look over here to the right. I'm going to look over here to the right. I bought this rose. It was really pretty. It was like a bluish purple. And I don't know what's wrong with that rose, but I didn't get it from, <laughs> but I got it. I got it from somewhere else. And I'm like, I've done the same thing I did. I have got, I did take some footage. So when I do the garden tour, I like insert the footage. I, I stand by David Austin roses. I really do because they're not, to me, I think they're disease resistant. I think that as long as you, uh, it doesn't take a lot of work. Now I do every, uh, when they start to begin the flower, I do go around with my rose tone. David Austin also has a um, flower food that you can use. I do that and then it's time for me to do it again. And all I do is go in deadheaded. As I'm deadheading, I'm cutting it back a little bit as well. And deadheading is just when it's done flowering, instead of that flower continue, or instead of the plant to continue to put energy into that, take go ahead and take that flower off so that it can put energy into another part of the plant. So I know a lot of people say, what's deadheading? And it's just allowing, even though the flower has um, bloomed and it's drying, the plant is still using some energy to, you know, even dry it on out or, or something like that. So deadhead it, and then you're going to encourage more blooms to come as well. So um, I, I do. I stand by David Austin. Now, the, the Rosa Ragosa that I bought, oh, gosh, what is the name of it? It was a company out in California. They It's organic, but I'm very pleased with them as well, and they were reasonable goodness gracious I'm gonna have to find the name I'm gonna have to go through my emails and find the name but I'm very pleased with their roses as well but I do I'm, I'm not gonna lie to y'all when I tell you that this year like the flush of roses was just so beautiful and they smell you know how you can and this rose the one I'm talking about over to the right it was just a pretty color it was like a bluish purple but I'm not gonna lie I really didn't have a smell when those roses were blooming the David Austin it just it smelled like rose, you know, how you're like, this is what, and that's why I didn't like roses or not like, that's why I wasn't big on roses because every time I went into the um, florist or even in the grocery store, I'm like, I don't, I don't see what the big deal is because they don't smell. They don't smell like nothing. But I'm telling you, when you grow your own and there's so many different varieties, so many different colors, and it's so many different mixtures of smells, like the smells are all different, um, you will definitely see what I'm talking about. So right now, my recommendation is um, David Austin. They sell bare root. They, they also sell it in the pot. Our local garden center here actually had them, but they were not taking care of them plants <laughs> like they were supposed to. They were not taking care of those plants and I was like I can't pay y'all this much and these look like this I read but online I'm not sure what happened this year like a lot of because I wanted a white rose for some odd reason I wanted a white rose but when I went to order one online a lot of their roses were not in stock this year so I'm not sure if it's because everything that was going on or either I was just too late, but I ordered them like the same time every year. And it was just, I just, after a certain point, I just said, show me everything that is in stock because the things that I were like, I was liking, it was like out of stock, out of stock. So I'm like, okay, well just show me what's in stock. And so I said, you know what? That's a sign. That's a, just leave it alone until next time. Okay. Just, just leave it alone. <laughs> Sometimes I just got to say, it may be that you don't need to be doing anything else okay Desi I check I check four stores and okay so were you able to order one online did they have it in stock so let me rephrase that they said I, I could place an order but let me tell you when they said it was going to ship out in February of 2022 and I was like mm -mm, no I'm no I'm not waiting I'm not waiting then so I thought I could I thought I could find one and then yeah they they were not taking care of those roses now if they want to mark them down and put them on clearance for a good price yeah i'll nurture them but i couldn't 
I couldn't pay the I could not pay thirty dollars for something that's. It looked like it was on its way out. I said, no, uh -uh, we we're not doing that today. Maybe no, not today. And I but I do love the roses. Um. <laughs> Devin say like Dr. Dre said, I don't mess with God or the IRS. Yeah, um, don't. Don't do it, y'all. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't do it. Okay, so Desi loves GT on Instagram. She did order one of David Austin online. It came in a week, but she ordered about a month ago. They closed in May for the East Coast, I believe. Okay, because I think it was like late February that I was on there. And I said, you know what? Because they always send me a coupon. They sent me the um, catalog. So you can, if you want to look, um, hold on, because y'all know I get off on a tangent and these start, uh, the the things keep disappearing. So if you want to request a catalog, you can request a catalog or you can go online, but they may just have some available. They may, that are ready to ship out. I just, maybe it's, they just didn't have the white roses that I want. So I'm glad you were able to get one and order one, Desi Loves. Which one did you get and what color? Tell us that in the comments. Oh, wow. Golden Celebration and Ladies Chalet. I've seen that Golden Celebration before. That's very pretty. Very pretty. And you got to let us know about the smell. So if I'm right, if I'm right, you got to let everybody know uh, if you can tell a difference with the smells. I'm, I'm telling y'all, it's just, it's amazing. It smells so good. Like, and then when a breeze comes through, it was just, oh, it was amazing. Okay. So let's see here. I had to get rid of our dandelions. They were a source of pain for us. They look so terrible in the yard. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we got plenty, plenty of, um, yeah, plenty of dandelions that's coming up, but um, they're good. You know, maybe you should saute some greens if y'all don't put like the weed and feed on there. And then the flowers are pretty. They, they, uh, they're happy, happy for us. But yeah, I know a lot of people don't like um, the dandelions in there. They say they're weeds. I, I, I definitely, I understand. I do. At home with Cherie, I'm growing lots of edible flowers. If these comments do not stop disappearing on me, maybe if I hold my finger down. Okay, I'm growing lots of flowers. I'm just joining, but want to thank you for the pro mix suggestion. Found it locally. Oh, wow. Okay, found it locally and loving it so far. Catalog is nowhere in my area this year. Yes, cattle, the cattle, Kellogg's, they have that. I know this did not do this. Sorry, um, IG. We have to go like an hour away for the Kellogg's. They're I like them too. I will. I like them, but I'm glad that you like the Pro Mix because I'm finna tell y'all something, and a lot of people might not like it. So I went the other day because I just I just needed some. I had some leftover pine soil, needed some pine soil, and I got to run in my mouth. And I got to stop. I got to stop running my mouth at the garden center. But it was, you know how you have the busted bag? So it was somebody there. You have the busted bags, and the guy was asking me about garden soil and this, that, and the other. But this particular brand, and y'all know if, if I don't like it, I just, if you don't have nothing good to say, you just don't say it at all. But I was like, I told him, I said, no, mm -mm, you don't want that. Because this is like, I said, look at this. Like, I didn't put my hand all in the people bag. I'm like, look at this. This is like almost wood. I said, you don't get, like, especially when you are growing the in a pot. Like, your soil is supposed to be nice and fluffy and aerated. And it's supposed to have, you know, like the perlite in there. And I just feel that. I feel that lightness and fluffiness in the pro mix. This particular one. I was like, this is like straight wood to me. But I said, but you, it's your money now. Now you do, you do what you want to. Cause I can't tell people how to spend their, <laughs> spend their money. Um, let's see. Desi loves. Okay. So the golden celebration and lady shallot. Okay. Yellow and orange. Those are really pretty colors. Oh, you did pick up a white rose from home Depot called for Carl dusk. And it's white, a hybrid tea rose. I am going to have to look at that because I did. I don't know why. Some reason we have like the light pink rose, we have the burgundy rose, and I liked it that purplish blue. But I said, you know what? When I make my flower arrangements, a, a white rose would really be pretty. And so that was the that was my thinking on why I wanted a white rose. So I'll have to check them out. 
the best potting soil king tax service to me, to me, to me, to me, and that's why I have to say, in my opinion, is ProMix. Now, ProMix, they don't sell it here. I have to go about an hour and 10 minutes out. They have a Walmart that's about 45 minutes from us, and they only do it seasonally. So if you catch it, you catch it, get what you're going to get, because if you go back again, you probably won't see it. And I don't know why they do that, and I don't know why this particular one, they don't ever open the garden center up. But like I told y'all in the last live, now I'm not making the schedule, and I don't know what people have going on a lot of times when i'm thinking in my head why stuff at i'm like you see you might you don't know the whole story you just on the outside looking in so just take your stuff up if you're gonna get it to the just walk all the way up to the register because maybe something happened that they can't open the garden center gate i'm not i'm not sure but i was like right, do y'all even open <laughs> but okay that's a that's a whole nother story y'all so i'm glad at home with sheree that you are enjoying the pro mix um let me know the growth um how let me know because I'm, I'm real like big with writing stuff down so let me know if you could tell a growth difference as well i still add a little bit of slow release fertilizer um in my potting mix y'all know the plant tone or the um the plant tone or the garden tone like i'll put a little bit in there but I just, I don't know. I just like the way it feels. It just, it just really feels good. And I've had my hand on a lot of potting soils, a lot of garden soils. And right now, that's the one that I like the best. Okay. Okay. So at home with Sheree is also in Minnesota, 4B. Woo, y'all. Yes. That's amazing. Y'all are amazing. In Min yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. I know y'all will probably hear me complain when it gets cold all the time. Oh my gosh. Um, I make jam out of my rose petal. Oh wow, that sounds good. Rose petal jam. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, roses, it's so many things you can do with it. Not just eat it, but it's a lot. It is a lot. Um, some smell lemony. Yes, they actually have like, I think this one, which one is this? Because I have the Queen of Sweden. I can remember her. Um, Desdemona and, um, what is the one in the front? Oh my gosh. But one is like, it, it just, I don't know. It really smells good. But yeah, they have some, like when you look at the descriptions also on David Austin, that like they'll have hints of lemon or hints of citrus or hints of myrrh or hints of, like, it'll tell you the, the, the scent notes or the flavor notes or however they say it, it'll, it'll tell you the different notes of smells that you'll get from it. And that's another reason why I got some of them too, not because of the, because of the color, but also because of the fragrance as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Anonymous source. Love your channel insight and your presentation. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for the good info on roses. Okay. Hey, okay, and hey at Southern Entertainment at ch and chat group. Hello, New Art Gardener. Um, I use, okay, so Devin said he also used the Pro Mix. No problems at all. I can't find Black Cow here. My, yeah, um, the my garden center. So another thing that I also use too, we do vermicompost, which is you compost with the worms. But we don't have a lot, like we don't have a big, you know, operation going on. So a lot of times when I plant, uh, little pots of stuff. I'll take some of my ver vermicompost and go ahead and like mix it in. But when I'm doing like a raised bed or a container, I do the black cow. And I do notice that the garden center right up the street from us, they are totally out. I'll probably have to go to another one that's like 45 minutes away. But that's, a, I mean, I, I just use that for an excuse also to look and see what they have new because they always have different flowers. But yeah, black cow has been, really black cow has been hard to find since like last year. I've noticed that. Like you, when you catch it, like the last time I catch it, I'm on my last bag. You just have to get some bags of it and um, keep it because they are out. Okay, so King Tax Service, I use Miracle grow last year and it didn't work for me yes and that's why i say like depending on your environment and the the conditions around 
like certain souls just certain souls just don't don't work and i do i have my favorites but sometimes if they don't have it like the pro mix <laughs> sometimes i just have to just go with something and nurture you know just kind of amend the soul and nurture it myself and put my own little stuff because i have like a big bag of perlite um in the storage i have a big bag of vermiculite especially the one that has like a lot of um just like a lot of i don't know i'm like it's no way but i digress yeah I, I do amend like if i can't find what i really want sometimes i will amend my soil or i'll put like some peat moss in there i put some perlite you know and just kind of yeah i don't know they they probably need to talk to us gardeners here and some of the company so we can tell them what we're looking for <laughs> so you can tell them what you're looking for um okay and sifting some soil 55 she says that's why i sift my soil yes absolutely when i do my soil block i definitely have to sift it to get some of those uh big pieces out especially because the main like the main ingredient is the peat moss and they have like a lot of stuff in there so i have to sift it like three times in order to get it down to a nice uh fine consistency that i'm looking for so yeah that's another idea too sometimes you you may have to sift your soil um to get some of those big chunks out of there um fox forms happy frog yep ha i've heard that happy frog has a good potting soil um i will have to i need to try them because they i've heard they had a good they also have different um fertilizers like organic fertilizers and soil conditioners um, and they have that at the local local garden center here. So I need to try that out too because I, I know that they're very popular. So I will try them out. Okay, growing with Donnie. I wonder if you call ahead and have them pull the pro mix for you. That way you don't go all the way there and they're not open. The place that I went an hour and 10 uh, minutes to, oh yeah, I called them. Because I, I wasn't sure if they had opened back up to the public anyway. But I called them and I told them, I said, look, I'm about to drive. <laughs> I'm about to drive an hour and 10 minutes, so I need to make sure y'all are open. And they do, like they help you take it out to the car. And evidently, this farm or nursery also, they do a lot of starts and they have like off to the side, they have pallets and pallets and pallets of Pro Mix. Like they use the Pro Mix, but they use like the, like the bales of Pro Mix. Not like, you know, how we can get the regular potting soil. Like they have bales and bales of it. And I see why. I, I do. I see why. It is um it's it's pretty good. And sometimes I'll switch, like if I find one better. That's why I say that one so far, that is that one is a good one. But it wasn't organic. Do you use um the one if you found the okay, so Betty said she found some at Walmart, but it wasn't organic. Do you use for herbs? Yes. I still um it's they have lines of potting soil and garden soil that's organic, but it's, I'm not going to lie, it's hard to find. So a lot of times I will use the regular potting soil and you may have gotten the, the compressed one. I've seen Pro Mix organic, but I don't see it a lot and it's a very small bag and it's really expensive. So that's why I tell people like, we still garden organically. And I mean that we don't put like the synthetic fertilizers um, on our, the things that we ingest. Like we don't put that on there. We don't um, use any any chemicals, like not on our vegetables and herbs. Now I told y'all like our pots in the front, that's the flower pillows. We're not going to eat those. So yes, I do use um, like a bloom booster on there. But anything that's in the raised garden bed, anything, any herb or things like that, um, I grow organically like the I think the most harsh thing we'll use is like neem oil or bacillus thuringiensis, the BT for the um, caterpillars and things like that but the organic potting soil is sometimes kind of hard to find so I just use regular like this pro mix that I got that I'm looking at right here is just a regular it's a regular pro mix that's already um, ready to go so that is a good question there because it is it's hard to find I did find some organic raised bed mixed um, that I tried, but it's sometimes it's just hard to find. Um, I started turnips and kohlrabi. Ooh, and the seeds germinate in seven days. Yes. 
I'll be potting up my herb and lettuce seedlings tomorrow and we'll keep track of, yes, let us know at home with Cherie. Ooh, those turnips. I cooked some turnips yet, y'all. If y'all don't know, okay, turnips is like, when it comes to leafy green vegetables, turnips is my favorite. But let me tell y'all about a turnip that, like, I grew up with the purple turnips. Uh, I think they call it purple top turnips. I grew up with that. But they have these turnips. They call them snow apples. And this is no lie, y'all. I seriously... You can eat these raw, like you don't have to cook them. It's the hookera, hookera turnips. Hookera. <laughs> they got them at Johnny C's. But very, uh, it germinates quick. I think it's maybe like 28 to 32 days. Like it does. So basically, you don't get a whole bunch of greens like with the purple top turnips, but you get, they call them snow apples. And I'm telling y'all, they are good. They are sweet. You can actually eat these raw. Seriously. And I am a turnip lover. I actually cooked turnips yesterday. I absolutely love turnips. That's like my favorite. And then I like kale and collards. I mean, I like those too, but something about the turnips are good. So kohlrabi. Let us know about the kohlrabi too. That is one plant I have not tried yet. I have not tried kohlrabi. Y'all type in the comment below if you have tried and grown kohlrabi. Um, that's one I didn't. So I have to put that on my to grow list. I have like a to grow list of stuff that is full of things that I want to grow. Thank you, Donnie. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the share button, especially if you know someone that wants to grow. Um, I know Donnie, like I keep telling you every time you go on live to say <laughs> and like and share, <laughs> but thank you so much. I definitely appreciate you. Um, I feel like I saw black cow at Bachman's. I don't use it. I compost my kitchen scraps. Yes, and use worm tea. Yes, worm tea is uh good. The compost tea is good as yeah, the compost tea. Um, I actually want to try happy frog. Yes, I have I have heard good things about happy frog. Um, I use the chunks for mulch. Good idea, sifting soil. So the potting soil that has the the big um, chunks in it, that is a very good idea. Use When you sift the soil, um, then you can use it for mulch. You're absolutely right. If these, y'all, these drink, okay, so sifting, sifting some soil 55. So when you have potting soil that has big chunks, sift it and use it for mulch. Perfect idea. Thank you for sharing that. Perfect idea at home with Cherie. Okay, I got the organic mix, comparable price to what I paid for Kella. Okay, the consistency consistency was different, but I'm pleased so far for sure. Okay, so glad to hear that. Um, okay, not yet, but interested. I found Burpee Organic Potting Mix at Tractor Supply for a cheap price. Yes. Okay, so Burpee, Bur Burpee Organic Potting Mix. Okay, and liking that one for so far. Okay, and it was good raw. I didn't get the chance to cook it. Just plant it for more. Okay, so I'm gonna put kohlrabi on my on my to plant list because I do want to try that. Okay, my husband is from Germany and kohlrabi is popular there. Yes, so we like it in our household. So how do you eat it? Um, like how do you prepare it at home with Cherie? I know that um, Sifting with Soil 55 said she likes it raw, but she hasn't had a chance to cook it yet. Um, growing for the first time this season, gardening with Bernie. Okay, it tastes like a mild turnip. Okay, so, oh, if I love turnips, I definitely need to grow that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be growing kohlrabi. I have to look and see um, when I can start my seeds. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to try growing that because I always see people growing it and it's so pretty to me. It's really pretty. So we are going to try growing that. I'm telling you, I got a long list. I think I need more gardening space. I really, really do. I'm going to expand a little bit more. I'm just going to keep expanding until we just don't have no grass, I guess, but it's okay. It's all right. We're going to have some fresh tomatoes this year. That's for sure. So thank you all for joining us. For all of y'all that are joining us just a little bit late, um, we were talking about five edible flowers that not only you can grow, not only that is beautiful, but you can also eat them too. So we talked about the dandelions. You can steam the leaves. You can take the flowers apart and sprinkle them um, on your... Um, 
salad and you can also make dandelion tea very good medicinal qualities regardless i drink dandelion tea from time to time myself um the chives they're very good on uh the baked potatoes but when they flower the beautiful purple flowers you can take and you can take those apart too and sprinkle them on the salad and then they also you can also make like a chive vinegar with it as well the roses is so many things you can do with those y'all so many things you can do with roses um we particularly grow the rosa ragosa for the rose hips and then also um, we use the petals and tea but you can also decorate with it as well and it's like totally edible totally edible so much you can do with it and we have somebody that actually make jelly with the rose so very and i mean any type of rose um is edible then we have our calendula that's like my summertime is summer beautiful beautiful um, flowers that you can make the calendula salve with if, if you want to but you can also use that in tea and then you can also take the flowers or the petals and sprinkle them around and last but not least the nasturtium you can use those for the leaves are edible in salads and also the flowers y'all should try that out and the leaves are kind of like a peppery bite there so you definitely have to try that out okay so really quick um, at home with Cherie. Okay, so they roast the kohlrabi. Ooh, sounds good. Raw and salad. It's like jicama and turnips. Ooh, love that. Uh, if you harvest at the right time, wait too long, and it's woody, so you should roast it then. Okay, so kind of, let me tip. If these squirrel, I don't know what's going on with the squirrel. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with squirrels. And real quick before I get off, so now I have to bring out my bird netting because i took a video of his little self yesterday or her little self i don't know so the birds are like oh you can see me you can see me eating your blueberries and they will on this pergola what they will do is they will post up they'll look left right they'll make their call okay they'll make their bird call and then they just dive in the blueberries i said okay that's it now y'all gonna leave me some blueberries for a smoothie okay now my blackberries are about to uh, get ready to start ripening. So I'm just going to have to bring out the bird netting. And I know I know for a fact they're stealing my strawberries. <laughs> I know for a fact. Y'all know I don't mind sharing, but just like don't be greedy and don't be wasteful. That's what I tell them. Like don't just go on. <laughs> don't just like take a little bite and then get another strawberry and take that and put. Don't do that. Eat the whole thing. I don't mind sharing. Um, what <laughs> just as I have ghetto. I have um, ghetto squirrels. They did the same thing to my beet seedlings last year. Came right back looking for me to plant some more. Right. I'm just like, if y'all don't stop it right now. But these, they like run across the fence. I don't know what is their problem. I don't. But at the park that I walk at, like at least if I start walking, like these squirrels will go ahead and they will, you know, scurry on the one at the park where i walk at they don't even move out the path okay they are like you need to walk on by so i can finish doing what i'm doing i mean they just no i guess they said that's their territory you know i'm i'm the i'm the guest walking through you know so hurry up and get out the way but yeah sure i'm sure i'm like look i will share with the birds i'll share with the bees the butterflies y'all come on because i feel like i'm doing my part but just do not be wasteful and greedy because this same bird, I have been watching him like every few minutes, okay? Every few minutes, he just like diving in the blueberries, just diving in there. And I'm like, can you at least wait till I get a few? I'll give you some, but just stop it. So I don't know. Maybe you think if, do y'all think if I get like a bird feeder, they will, they'll leave they'll leave my blueberries alone. I'm not sure. Cause last year for my blackberries, I actually did have to put bird netting on here cause they was just getting out of control. They were just out of control. And then they were being wasteful with the blackberries as well. They will not do that this year. They will not do that. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes. Gangster birds. I'm telling you, I don't know what is going on. They got to get, and I'm like, look, like I told some of the birds, I know I got some worms on my greens that I need to pull. Go eat that. Leave my blueberries alone. Go eat some of those worms. That's good. <laughs> you can only try. Yeah, I'm like, look, go catch some of those worms. Go catch some of the snails. Get them. 
stop doing that to my blueberries and my strawberries. So, um, it has been, I appreciate y'all again. I know I always say I'm not going to be long, but I appreciate y'all taking time out of your Friday. Um, I plan to get some of my blueberries. <laughs> yeah, I plan to get some of my, that's right, some of my blueberries this year. I did not get any. Yeah, you go, you're going to have to get the bird netting. I know they sell it at the garden center. Like, that was my lifesaver for the black bears. I had to get, uh, yeah, they, yeah, you're right. They are trying to eat fresh. I mean, you can't blame them. You can't blame them. They're trying to eat fresh like so, but you cannot blame them because it's like, oh, this is nice and fresh, and honey, I'm about to eat this at the perfect time of ripeness, okay? But I'm like, it, I'm like, <laughs> like you said, it's my, my blueberries, but I tell you, I, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know what's going on with them. But we're going to get our, I'm going to get myself together this year because they're not going to take over my blackberries because I love to make blackberry cobbler. That's like another one of my favorites. And it was so good last year when we made blackberry cobbler. But again, I appreciate y'all so much for taking time out of your day. Again, like and share. Um, if you know someone, make sure you share this information with them. We're here if every Monday at noon Eastern Standard Time, every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And y'all, if you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. Turn the notifications on because you're going to see what happened to my patio on Sunday. I'm going to make sure I go. I might start editing the video um, tonight because I got to pull it off my phone and upload it. But um, thank you so much growing with Donnie and thank you for keeping me you keep me on uh you keep me on track because y'all know I get to talk and talk and talk and get out get off there and thank you growing with Donnie he he makes sure I say like and share like and share and I, I intend to do that but you keep me on track and I appreciate you for that and just thank you for always taking the time um so y'all let's get to growing some beautiful edible flowers if you do make sure you uh Email me, DM me, tag me, tell me how you use it. Tell me if you make some chai vinegar. Tell me if you made some um, some tea, and I will keep y'all posted. Um, so y'all be safe this weekend and have a great time in the garden this weekend. And again, um, if you want to see more day-to-day -day pictures, just we put more on Instagram um, on Southern Entertainment. It's just like day-to-day -day pictures, but I do have a garden tour that I am getting ready to film for y'all. So, uh, let me put this video out first Sunday, and then we'll just go around and talk about all the progress that we are making. So y'all be safe and we will talk again soon. Um, bye y'all. Y'all have a good weekend too. See you later.